Insect infestations aren't just an annoyance. These little critters can be downright devastating. And even if you manage to get rid of them, there's a good chance half your colony is going to get wrecked in the process. Unfortunately, if you build underground, there's no way to stop infestations from happening. But armed with some knowledge about how they work, you take steps to control and prepare for them. In this video, we'll look at how RimWorld decides where to put infestations and see if that gives us any ideas how to make them less devastating. Now first, a lot of what I've learned about infestations comes from two sources. A comment on a Reddit post by Zorba the Hut and an imager gallery by James Tech. I'll leave a link in the description for those who want more information. Now with that said, infestations happen in the same way that raids or sieges do, when the AI storyteller decides it's time for one. If even a single block is infestable when this happens, you'll get an infestation. What we'll look at here is how the game decides where in your base to put the infestation. Now our main tool for learning about this is in the dev mode, the draw infestation chance. It draws blue color on squares that can have infestations, and the darker the blue, the higher the chance that when an infestation ha happens, the hive shows up on that square. Now, for an area to be infestable, it has to be under a mountain roof, in an unblocked area, not too cold, mountainy enough, and inside a connected area of at least 16 tiles. So let's look at the connected area requirement first. Right over here, we have a little space inside a mountain, and you can see from all this blue that the infestation chance here is very, very high. Now, if we go ahead and we put a wall all down here in the middle. You see the infestation chance goes away. But if we change one of these wall areas into the door, it comes back. That's because it needs to have 16 squares that are connected and connected can go through doors, but it can't go through walls. Now is the unblocked area. Here's what we mean. Suppose we put something right here, like a chair, say. You'll see how the blue disappears from underneath the chair. That means that a hive can't spawn there. Now, you'll notice for here, the chair's blocking doesn't take away from the 16 by 16 area. We can get it all the way down to just one, and there's just one spot here where it can spawn, because it's still inside a large enough connected area, even though this is the only available space for infestation. Now as for the roof, if we come over here, you can see it says overhead mountain. Now we can actually change the roof of this by coming up here and finding the um, make roof. And when we do this, it will actually change the roof into a thin roof, a constructed roof. And as you can see, that removes the spawn chance for that area. The infestations can only spawn underneath a mountain roof, not underneath a constructed roof. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to change the roof inside the game playing properly. It's just something we can do with the dev tools, but doing it shows how that affects the chance. Finally, what do we mean when we say it depends on how mountainy it is? Well, look here, we've got these two regions. This one is pretty darkly blue. This one is a much lighter kind of purpley region. And the reason is because this region counts as more mountainy than this one does. Now, how mountainy a region is, is roughly how kind of surrounded by mountain, either solid rock or overhead thick roof it is. So this one is a lot closer to the outside than this one is. And as a result, this one ends up being a little less mountainy and there's not as much spawn chance in here. Now, also notice if we come to this one right here, it's a little bit darker in here and here and a little bit lighter in the middle. That's because if you, as you go this way from these squares, you get solid rock. But as you go this way from these squares, you get some just overhead roof. And that means that, you know, these ones are slightly less mountainy because of the space here and here than these ones which have space on this side, but rock over on that side. To get a good sense of what these different shades of blue mean, we can force the game to spawn some infestations and see what proportion end up in each of the two regions. So we come to here, we go execute incident, we go infestation, and there's one right there. As you can see, this square here becomes no longer available for infestation, but this one isn't either because the insect jelly ends up there. We don't want that, so we'll go ahead and destroy the insect jelly 
And then we'll do another 10 of these and see how many end up on which side. Okay, so as you can see, I've spawned in 10 of these and all 10 of them ended up over here on the right, on the much bluer side. Now I've actually done this trial a total of five times. So on this most recent one, we had zero and 10. Before that, we had two and eight, five and five, another two and eight, and a final two and eight. Two and eight was very popular. And as a result, we have 22% ended up in the light blue area and 78% over here in the dark blue area. This region over here is lighter because it's less mountainy than this region. But part of why it's light is that there's a better region over here. So the game would rather spawn a hive over here than over here if it can. If this region wasn't available, as we can show by putting some walls in there, this one over here would be much darker. So let's just do like this. Yeah, as soon as that goes out, that becomes very dark. So the spawn chance is partly determined by all the things we've said, but also if there's a better one, it'll take some chance away. If there's not, then the game's gonna just go wherever it can. Also remember that the darkness of an area tells you there's a higher infestation chance for each square. It doesn't mean there's a higher infestation chance for the darker room. This is important because size matters. Here we have a very big room with lower chances and a smaller room with higher chances. But since this room is so much bigger, even though the chance for each individual square is lower, the chance for the whole room is pretty high. We can show this by doing, as we've done before, spawning in more infestations and seeing where each of them lands. Okay, so after running this test, we have got six down here on the big room in the bottom and four in the much smaller room up top. And I've actually run this test five times as well. Three of the times I got the six and four result and two of them I got the five and five result. So it's split down the middle and that makes it about equal. On average, 54% of things ended up over here and 46% ended up up here now, given the differences in size, that's actually a pretty good showing for the small room up here. But the point is, just because it's really blue, don't think that's where they're going to spawn. They could be down here as well. Okay, so let's see now whether we can do things that will alter the infestation chance. We'll have to have another room open, so if we lower the chances here, the infestations have somewhere else to go. First, let's just check and see if different flooring types help. We'll just look at some different kinds of floors and see if the color changes when we put them in. So first of all, let's try some tile. Does not seem to have changed. Carpet. Looks the same as well. Maybe some gold tile. Okay, it looks like it might be a little lighter. Oh, this doesn't seem darker. So we'll check that in a minute. Also, we can try some wood or some concrete. And finally, some sterile tile. Okay, so the gold and sterile tile, this looks a little bit lighter and it's not easy to tell if that's because the blue has actually gotten lighter or if it's just the light color from underneath showing through. So as before, we can go ahead and spawn in some infestations and see how exactly they pattern. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done this trial. And as before, I've done it five times. And here, this time, what we had this round was one hive over here and nine over here. In the other trials, we had four and six, two and eight, and three and seven. And that gives us a total of 11 over here and 39 over here, which bakes out to 22% and 78% yet again, exactly the same as we had in our control group. So it looks like the flooring type makes no difference whatsoever to infestation chances. For our next trial, we wanna see how lights affect it. So here we have six very bright sun lamps in here. And already it looks as though this is much lighter and this is much darker than we had before. Now, just to verify that it really is a change in the spawn chances and not just a matter of the light making this look brighter than it normally would, we'll go ahead and do our usual test. 
Okay, in this trial, we got exactly half and half, five over here and five over here. In previous trials, we had nine and one, six and four, eight and two, another six and four. And that gives us a 68% chance that things will land up here on the left, only a 32% chance over on the right. And that is a very big change from what we had before when we had a 22% chance of the left and a 78% chance on the right. Now here we've replaced the sun lamps with just with regular lamps, so it's not as bright in here. This is still lighter than it normally is, looks darker than it was before. Let's just go ahead and check exactly how much difference the different kinds of lights make. Okay, this time around we got three hives on the left and seven hives over on the right. In previous times I've had five and five, two instances of four and six, and one of seven and three, would give us a 46% chance over here and a 54% chance on the right. Still better than our baseline, but not as good as those bright sun lamps. Next, we'll check how temperature affects infestation chance. Here we've got a room which is lined with heaters, and I've put the heaters on the far side of vents so that the light from the heaters won't affect the amount of blue in here. And each one of these guys is set for a target temperature of 251 degrees Celsius. That is pretty freaking hot, guys. So we are just going to watch and see what happens to the blue in here as these, this room heats up. So it goes up 60, 72, 82, 89, 94... 101, it's an oven in here, guys. Water's gonna boil. 105, 106, 107. It looks like it might stabilize here around 109. So the best we can get those heaters to do. So I don't believe that at even at much hotter rates we're gonna see a change in the blue here, a change in the infestation chance. But it's pretty clear that, you know, even if it did, this would be totally impractical because your colonists can't live when it's that hot. So you can't change the temperature and keep your infestations down that way. It looks like it's not going to make any difference anyway. So next, let's check the cold. Okay, here's the same test done a second time in reverse with coolness instead of heat this time. And we currently have all of these coolers set to zero degrees Celsius. It's uh, hovering around one and two in the room. Let's lower it by one degree at a time and see what happens. So we're at zero, between one and zero, minus one, minus two, nine, ten. Uh, you can see over here it's getting a bit lighter, it's getting a bit darker over here as we go down. Yeah, it's switching, it's, the, it's moving over here, the chances, until by the time we get down to, there we go, minus 17, there's no chance at all. So, yeah, it's going, it goes between 16 and 17, it goes between some chance and no chance, flopping back and forth. So coolness does affect it. In fact, at about 8 degrees below 0 Celsius, you start losing chance, and by 17, there's no chance at all. So what have we learned? We've learned what matters most infestation chance is the mountaininess of a region. Of course, the size of a region will affect it too, because a bigger region just means there are more squares for an infestation to happen on. The temperature matters, and the light level matters, but the floor type does not seem to matter, and the temperature only matters when it gets really, really cold. So what does this tell us? Well, let me note first that there is one kind of very cheaty way to get away with no infestations, and that is by lining your floors and your empty spaces with power conduit. This will work because power conduit blocks infestations, but it feels to me like it's a sort of thing that's an oversight, and we should probably expect that to be patched in an upcoming alpha. Now, the other thing it suggests, though, is that you can manage where your infestations happen in a kind of useful way. So consider a base like this one. This is inside a mountain. These are all underneath overhead mountain roofs, most of them. This bit wasn't here. 
but there's not a lot of infestation chance in here just because it's not very mountainy. Now we can go ahead and check how much there is. There's a, still a fair bit right in here, but we've already, even though this isn't a mountain, we've already managed it a fair bit just by having most of this area dug out and having a lot of outside area available. But now we might do something even sneakier. In a map like this one, we can dig out a big area that's very, very mountainy in here and stick it behind a door. And why do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and now look at our infestation chance. There's still a little bit of blue here, but look how much lighter that is. Most of that chance is all being carried right here in this very mountainy area. Now, why do you want to do things that way? Well, for one thing, this is a controlled environment. This is the sort of place where we have a lot more kind of time and flexibility with when we want to deal with an infestation that comes up in here. Secondly, this area is far away from our base. Our base is over here. It's where we're living, eating, and storing things. Over here, we can deal with the infestation in ways you might not want to inside. For instance, we can use the trick of when we have an infestation, getting somebody to sneak in with an incendiary launcher, fire just enough to get some of those guys burning and run away, and let them all run around and get all burned up, heat up the room till they all die a heat stroke. That's a clever solution. I think what I recommend as a way of not trying to stop the infestations from happening, but trying to manage them to raise the chance they happen in a way that'll be most useful to you. So there you have it. That is the science of how in RimWorld infestations get made. If you want to reduce chances in an area, light it up, make sure it's not very mountainy, and make sure there's a much better dark mountainy area to encourage the insects to come to. But that's going to be it for me today. Let me know in the comments what question you want us to investigate next time, and I look forward to seeing you soon.